because there's some high notes, but it's just kind of a picture of us going to heaven, all right? But anyway, let's sing, let's sing uh, verse 2, all right? Sin's condemnation will then be o'er. Oh, that it were today. Sorrow and sighing shall be no more. Oh, that it were today. Then shall the dead in Christ arise, caught up to me. Jesus may come today and we all just disappear. <laughs> that would be awesome. Hey, let's sing it like that's going to happen, all right? Faithful and true when he find us here, if he should come today. Watching in gladness and not in fear, if he should come today. All of God's children then will fly to clouds of glory in the sky. Pray for uh, Maurice and Betty, if you would, please, and just keep them in, in mind. I would really appreciate it if you'd give them a call. Um, they're, uh, you know, it's easy to, when you're, when you're away from church, it's easy to feel forgotten. And you don't want that to be the case. You know, they're still a part of our family. And so they certainly would invite a phone call or a visit, uh, a letter. That just you know just says hey we miss you but we think about you all the time because they are talked about I, I hear you I, I hear people mentioning them all the time but um, but if you would just uh, maybe encourage them with a little note or something and you know honestly uh, while I love them and and you know you know I, I love them and I love visiting them uh, honestly it it's more looked at as something the pastor is supposed to do when you're that person um, it's so much more meaningful when it's from somebody who technically doesn't really have to do it. You get what I'm saying? I don't look at it as something I have to do. Um, it's something I, I want to do. But when you're the person that you're visiting, it's kind of like, you know, uh, I wonder if anybody else cares. And, uh, you know, and remember this too. One day you're going to be in the same situation. And you'll be wondering, I wonder if somebody's going to visit me. So it's just something to consider. Uh, if you would just remember and call them and just say, "Hey, I love you, miss you." Um, uh, they're 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 really struggling. So, uh, and they've done so much for our church, and I know they need that. But let's let's go ahead and we'll pray. Remember, Miss Sister Amala. She's got she's she's doing well, and um, uh, got some good reports. And uh, but just continue to pray for the the, the process involved. Okay. Lord, we just thank you for this time we can be together, and we pray that you would uh, just have uh, your way tonight. Lord, we, we pray that you would just teach us from your word and some of the valuable lessons that we find there. And, uh, Lord, we thank you for, uh, for the truths that we find. We thank you for uh, 
what, what, what we have available to us in Christ Jesus. Lord, we just pray that you would bless the junior church, the children's church. Lord, I, I, uh, I thank you that we have this, this group of young people uh, that we can nurture and train up. We've got, well, we've got, we, we don't have much time, but we've got more time than we would if they were teenagers. So I pray that you would use the time that we have with them to strengthen them and prepare them for what's ahead. And uh, Lord, I pray you bless Josh and Jilly as they help them. Lord, bless the main service as well. Lord, we pray for Maurice and Betty. We pray that you would just encourage them and uh, lift up their spirits. Lord, we pray that uh, that you would uh, just uh, just let them know that you're near. And uh, Lord, we also pray that you uh, be with Sister Namala and uh, the tests that are coming up and just the, the many doubts and uncertainties that are ahead. We pray that you just help her, Lord, to keep her eyes fixed on you. And we just thank you for all that you're going to do, Lord. Bless her. Uh, we, we pray, Lord, that you would uh, just uh, just uh, have your way in the church tonight. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's turn to page 170, because this is another truth. Uh, Jesus is coming again, but his spirit is here with us. The Comforter has come. Page 170. So let's uh, let's let's sing. Page 170. Uh... -huh. 
take up our offering. Remember, you be sure to give with a heart of thanksgiving. Be sure to give, but be sure to give with a heart of thanksgiving. And I know the Lord will, will surprise you. He really will. So let's pray, okay? Josh, if you lead us in prayer, please. Lord, our parents are blessed with love for the Lord and be used for honor and glory. Thank you for the message we heard this morning, Lord. Our parents are pastoring the preachers tonight. The young, young children's life tonight, the Lord. Pray for such that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Look down at the, uh, towards the end here, and uh, we'll look at verse 51. Okay, behold, I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and the mortal, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Boy, those are some powerful promises. Um, now notice what it says in verse 58. Therefore, my, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. <laughs> for him to say that at the very end, that's just really, that's, in, that's encouraging. That's, that's a comfort. Um, and uh, I, I just want, I, we're just going to kind of go ahead and I'm going to give you like a little precursor of of the of the of the prophecy series here, and just kind of we'll just see how we'll just see how things go, okay? Um, but uh, I just I, I don't know the Lord just the Lord just really laid it on my heart that it's a good time to do it, and um, uh, I, I really do believe that we're very I mean. I've always believed that we were close, and the more the Lord tarries, the more that I just believe that it's it's even closer, and it is. It's even closer. It's closer than it's ever been. Uh, there's a there's a a family that was staying with their granddad one night, and they loved to listen to that old grandfather clock. Every time it would go off, they'd listen to it. Dog. Uh, they were listening to it at midnight, and that thing donged to 10, 11 dong, 12 dong, 13 dong, and the kids go over to granddad and they say, Grandpa, did you hear the clock? 
It rang 13 times. What's the matter with the clock? And Grandpa says, I don't know, but it's later than it's ever been. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> my grandfather's clock would mess around like that. I've got a, I, I, my, my brother has the clock, but uh, it ne we never could get that thing to work. But the fact is, is no matter what man's interpretation of the time is, uh, Jesus is coming back at the time appointed. There is a time appointed and there's nothing that's going to stop him. And it was really a, a dreadful thought with um, uh, um, oh, Josh. <laughs> Forgetting people's names here. Uh, Y'all have to forgive me. I, I've, I've, been, I've been trying. I've had, I've had uh, the missions trip and then I've had a lot of schooling I've had to had to write some papers and stuff we're getting towards the end and it's getting a little bit it's getting a little bit busy so you'll have to forgive me for being a little bit scatterbrained but uh, but it's been good though um, it really the the paper that I'm writing is very interesting and um, and I trust it'll be a help I might actually let you borrow it uh, and read it it's all about the it's all about how we ought to view marriage um, and uh, you know, should 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 the should the husband and the wife be equal, or should they complement each other? And that's a major issue in society today. Um, but I, I chose to call this. Uh, uh, I chose to call the prophecy messages what is happening and what is going on, because what is happening we're we're hearing about it everywhere in the news. Uh, throughout the world, we're hearing a lot of uh, preachers talking about it, um, but it's been a question that's been asked since the disciples watched Jesus ascend into heaven on the Mount of Olives. They asked Jesus Christ, they said, is it the time? Are you going to establish your kingdom? Now that you've died and risen again, it can't be far away. And Jesus said to them in the modern vernacular, none of your business. <laughs> it is not for you to know the time or the season of the coming of the Son of Man. But, all right, he, he says, here's what you do need to know. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's the Comforter has come, okay? And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And I mean to tell you, most of the world has been evangelized. There are many unreached people groups that, that uh, people are, 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 are eagerly trying to tell about Jesus Christ. The Lord is compelling young men everywhere. I believe that there's a rise, a surge in missions. I think that there's a, I think there's still a great need for missions. Um, I, but I think that we shouldn't dwell on the, the fact that, that we lack in missions. I think that men around the world are responding to missions probably more than they have in a while. Uh, there's, there's a lot of positivity. There's, there's, uh, there are more Christians in China today then there are communist leaders. And that's an encouraging thought. There's not a whole, I mean, you know, there, as far as the, the, the population is concerned, uh, China, I believe, is about 2.9 billion people. That's a lot of people. And certainly not all of them are Christians. There's many that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. But from my understanding and reading the statistics, there are more Christians in China then there are communist leaders. That's really, that's really an encouraging thought. Uh, so we need to look at the positive of things, and we need to consider what is happening. All right, we know what's happening, but what is going on? Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of earthquakes that are taking place. You heard about the one in Taiwan, seven on the Richter scale. Uh, by the way, um, uh, uh, Adam Waltz is doing fine. But it was, it, 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 it shook them up, literally. It was not a pleasant thing. And then, of course, you heard about the one up in New York, the New York, New Jersey area. Uh, there was another earthquake that took place. And uh, you saw the video that I shared. 
that the, the earthquakes are accumulating. I mean, it, it's, it's almost like the earth is about to explode. It just kind of started slowly and, and then towards the end. You really should watch it on YouTube. It wasn't very clear up here on the screen. You just couldn't see, uh, you couldn't see them popping up the way that you could on, 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 a, on, on a regular screen. And so I would encourage you to, to look that up. If you want the link, I'll be happy to send it to you. But it really was an interesting thing. This was something that was shared by a lost person. And Jesus Christ said it himself. He said that in the he, he said that the end is not yet come, but towards the end you're going to hear of wars, and we've had them in, in the past century, 20th century. We've had more wars than any other century in the entire world. Uh, wars, rumors of wars. All right, you remember those? You remember some of you might remember the Cold War. All right, those were rumors of wars. Uh, there's, uh, you know, there, there's always rumors. People are always talking about, I wonder what's going to happen up in the Ukraine. I wonder what's going to happen in Russia. I wonder what's going to happen here. And, you know, there's, there's always talk about what's going to happen. Um, you know, wars, rumors of wars, pestilences, a new wave of COVID, you know, all these new things. I mean, it's just, it's, 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 it's prevalent throughout the world. Pandemics. One after the other, chain reactions happening everywhere, sicknesses, water is drying up, Lake Chad is drying up. It's getting to the point where the, the where many people in Africa and uh, a large portion of the uh, of the people in Africa are relying on Lake Chad, and it's drying up. And what's going to happen is is they're all going to end up migrating. A lot of them are from French provinces. They're all going to end up migrating to uh, Europe. And uh, there's going to there's going to be a lot of problems. There's going to be a lot of things that uh, a lot of decisions that need to be made. Um, now, uh, you know, some of the things that I'm going to share with you are theoretical. Um, you know, I, I, I don't I don't know all the answers, but it sure does look like the times are at hand. Um, so first of all, I want us to just kind of consider what Paul is saying here. He says, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. All right, now, why does he call it a mystery? The reason why is because you don't see the church very much in the Old Testament. You really do when we look back after having seen the New Testament and, and read the New Testament and understood it, we can see the church all throughout the Old Testament. But up until the New Testament times, there really wasn't a whole lot said about the church. And I'm going to provide you a visual. So Harrison, if you could show, uh, show them the prophet looking ahead and prophesying. Okay, this, that's great. Okay, this was drawn by Wilson. That's pretty good, isn't it? All right. I asked him to draw this for me, and he did a good job. But uh, but the, this right this is what the prophets saw, okay, right here. And all throughout the Old Testament, you'll see several things that take place in the New Testament, okay? Uh, what did they see? Okay, well, they saw the birth of Jesus Christ, right? Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel. All right, which being interpreted as God with us. All right, so that's in Isaiah 53. Then we have, you see that? That's the crucifixion. All right, I'm sorry, the, the birth of Jesus is not Isaiah 53. That's Isaiah 53, okay? Um, and uh, that talks about the crucifixion. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, spent of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Uh, we also see in the book of Joel, the day of Pentecost, where he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your old men shall uh, shall dream dreams, and your young men shall prophesy. I'm not exactly sure how, how it goes, but, but, but we see in Joel that it happened, and we see Peter saying, today is fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that uh, I will pour my spirit out upon all flesh, and you'll prophesy and dream dreams and see 
visions and, and great things will happen uh, before that great day comes where Jesus returns and the sun is darkened and the moon turns to blood. And he gives this timeline of events that, 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 uh, that happen, right? So if, if, if that, if what Joel prophesied happened at Pentecost, and yet we read in that very same passage that the moon will turn to blood and the sun will be darkened, that has yet to happen. Now we've seen a lot of blood moons. We've seen a lot of solar eclipses, but we haven't seen it happen at the same time. Now that's unusual. I mean, I, I've, I've, <laughs> I've wrapped it around my head trying to think, okay, what causes a lunar eclipse? And what, okay, so a lunar eclipse happens, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, a lunar eclipse takes place when the earth blocks the sun and, and the, the moon turns red. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Well, Judson's saying yes, he thinks it's okay. The moon, when we have a solar eclipse, the moon blocks the sun from our vision, all right? But make sure you wear your sunglasses when you look, all right? Because it could really damage your eyes. Um, but what I'm curious about is what on earth is going to cover up the sun while the moon is eclipsed? It, it just, something else is going to get in the way. I don't know what it is, all right? But whatever it is, it's prophesied in these latter days. So we see the we, we see that, all right, so, so that event takes place right there. We have Antichrist, which is prophesied by Daniel in chapter 7, verse 19 to 27. The Son of Righteousness comes down with healing in his wings, all right? He returns to Mount Olivet, all right? And he establishes his kingdom for a thousand years. All right, so the prophets saw all of these things. One thing that the prophets didn't really see very well was the church. All right, they didn't see this. They didn't talk about it. And so as a result, the church was left out of prophecy, the Old Testament prophecy. It's a mystery. Paul made it clear, this is a mystery. He also talks about the husband and the wife. He said, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. All right? So, uh, the, the, what, what's, now the, the, why is it important that I point out that the church is a mystery? Because people like to connect the church to other events in Scripture and they make things, they get things wrong as a result. All right, things are not going to happen based on the church. Let me explain something to you. The church is very special to the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, when he says that, that means that the church is very important, and the Lord Jesus ain't going to let anything touch it. All right? The church is also, Jesus made it very clear that the gates of hell would not prevail against the church. He said to Peter, he said, uh, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Now, what's he talking about? Well, uh, he asked Peter, he said, uh, he, he said, Peter, who, who do people say that I am? The disciples said, well, some say that you're Elias, and some say you're Jeremiah, or one of those prophets. And he says, but who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah. Interesting that he said Simon, son of Jonah. I thought that was an interesting name for him. But he says, blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for, for flesh and blood have not revealed unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto you that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Church? What's that? <laughs> it was a mystery. They listened to things. All right, have you ever listened to a sermon that I preach and you missed completely what I said? 
<laughs> of course you have. Especially with Mike Barnett. I mean, I get so deep. There's probably all sorts of stuff that I've said that I can't even remember. I'm no, just kidding. But seriously, uh, but when it comes to listening to preaching, you don't gather everything. And these guys heard him say, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And they, 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 they probably all looked at each other, rolled their eyes and said, he's always going to talk so cryptic, doesn't he? You know? Jesus said, I have many things to say unto you, but you can't bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he shall teach you all things, for he shall bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have showed unto you. But I have, a lot, I have a lot of things to say, and there's a lot of things that I have said that you've completely missed. He said to the disciples, he said, I'm going to die on the cross. And Peter grabs him and says, far be it from me, Lord. And he grabs him and says, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou savorest the things that be of God and not of men. Now, I don't think that, I think that basically what he's saying is, is, Peter, you're being an adversary to me. Do not hinder me from the purpose for which I came. That's what Jesus was saying to Peter. So he said, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You know what that means? That means that the principalities and powers that rule this world are presently being hindered from doing what they want to do. You know why? Because the church is in the way. Can you imagine if the church woke up today and realized what they were? That they realized, I'm betrothed to Jesus Christ. I'm one with his spirit. And all of a sudden, the church awakens to the realities of what the scriptures say, can you imagine what a danger they would be to the enemy? Oh, the enemy doesn't want you to know the truths of scripture. The enemy doesn't want you to know about the power that you have with Jesus Christ. He doesn't want you to know about the authority that you have. He's, the devil is a defeated foe. Basically, he looks like the Wizard of Oz. All right, what do I mean by that? He is... He's devised all sorts of lies and, and illusions in your head to make you think that he's the great and terrible Oz. When in fact, he's a little old man in the corner hiding behind a curtain. And he's scaring the living daylights out of the church. But we just need a little Toto to go along and pull back the curtain. And we need the church to have a little look and go, who's that guy? Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. You remember that? All right. That's the enemy. That's the devil. Do you know that defeated enemies would lie their way through and try to win the war by deceit, by bluffing? All right. Uh, you know, the, um, I, my, my boys like, uh, my boys like Star Trek. You know, and there's this scene in Star Trek where the Starship Enterprise loses all of its power and it's just kind of floating there. And Kirk goes, we're a sitting duck. And right, right over here are the Klingons and they're sitting there looking at him, you know, like, why haven't they fired? They weren't sure what was wrong. They thought maybe, so Kirk gets on there and he goes, this is Captain James T. Kirk of the Enterprise. Because you have no right to be here, and if you if you don't get out of here, we're going to blow you away. Well, they, they couldn't do anything. <laughs> but he was bluffing. All you have to do is look at the scriptures and say, Satan, you're bluffing. That's right. You're bluffing. And the enemy says, no, I'm not. And you say, yes, you are. The Bible says so. Jesus had to call him on it three times. It is written, it is written, it is written. The devil hates the church. All right, now, let's, uh, let's take a look at the timeline, the blueprint, the, the one with the fire. No. Yes, that's the one. Okay. So this is, by the way, I, I, God rest his soul, Bob Shelton, I'm giving you credit for the diagram that you drew. 
Bob Shelton is a dear friend of mine, and I asked him if I could borrow his blueprint, and he said, as long as you tell people that I made it. <laughs> so, Dr. Bob, thank you for, for this. Okay, so, uh, right here is where we are right now, okay? I, I would say probably about right there, okay? So what we have, this is a diagram, and I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to print the sheet out for you so you can actually look at it yourself, okay? <laughs> But what we have here are, according to scripture, we have heaven, Satan is the prince of the power of the air, and we have earth. Okay, now this little line right here is the church, okay? And then right here is Hades. This is where the souls of the damned go that choose not to believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. All right, now, the 70th week of Daniel, we're going to look at that a little bit later, all right? That would be the seven-year tribulation. One week in the Bible is seven years. Don't ask me why they call it a week. I don't know. But in the Bible, if you read a week in the Old Testament, it's referring to seven years. All right? Uh, as a matter of fact, when you see that Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a short time for the love he had to. It was worth every minute of those seven years to work for Rachel. He loved her. And then it says this, when he had fulfilled her week, he married her. Okay. So when you see that, you're, you're, you see a clear explanation that a week is seven years. Whenever you see the word week in the Old Testament, it's a seven, it's seven year period. Okay. There's 70 weeks. Seven times seven is what? 49. Seven times 70 is 490. All right, just add a zero to it, okay? All right, now, that with, with all right, so what, what you do is you take off seven years and you have 483 years. Am I correct, guys? Is that right? Okay, I'm making sure my math is right here. Okay, so what is with the 483 years, all right? The building process of Nehemiah began the 70 weeks of Daniel, all right? That was the countdown. All right, so God said that when the temple is rebuilt, when they begin to build the temple, the, time, the, the countdown begins. 483 years later, guess what Daniel prophesies? He said in the midst of those 70 weeks, right at the 69th week, Messiah will be cut off. Because we need the 70 weeks to be fulfilled in order for the kingdom of God to come back. In order for Jesus to come back and rule and reign on earth for a thousand years, we need Daniel's prophecy to complete itself, 70 years. Well, at 69, or I'm sorry, 70 weeks, I'm sorry. 70 weeks, all right. At 69 weeks, our king was crucified. Show him that chart, would you? 70 weeks of Daniel? Yeah, yes, okay, that's right, okay. So, is there another one? That's the one, okay, so here we go, all right. So here's the command to restore Jerusalem 445 BC, this is when it got started, okay? Now, the completion of the building project was 396 BC and 434 years passed, 62 weeks, all of a sudden Jesus is crucified. And now we're in a parenthetical statement in the timeline called the church age, okay? Or the times of the Gentiles. We're waiting for this seven year period right here, which completes the 70 weeks. All right, now pull up that other one that you just had, Harrison. That's it, okay. So here's the 70th week of Daniel, and this is the beginning of sorrows, all right? This is what Jesus said, all right? All these are the beginning of the sorrows, all right? The first three and a half years, 42 months, 1,260 days, and then when Antichrist breaks the peace treaty that he signed, and I'm going to explain that in just a minute, begins the great tribulation period right here. Boy, it's going to be bad. 
you're going to have the judgment of God and the judgment of, I mean, Satan is going to be embodied in, 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 in flesh. I don't know how that works, all right? Uh, it's weird, all right? It's weird. But he embodies the Antichrist, and he, he's, he's cast down, right? Now bring up that other one again. The other one, the, the, yeah, that one. Okay, so we're right here. Now, while the, while the church is on earth, Satan is not able to get his work done. Now, I want to show you, I, uh, I want to show you, the, turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Are you all following me? Okay. I, I really do try to make sure that you understand everything that's going on here, okay? Because you need to understand, so the most important thing is that you need to understand that we're right here, okay? And the timeline goes this way, all right? Everything you see is what's going to happen, okay? We're about, I would say, <laughs> I'd say we're about right there, <laughs> all right? I think we're really close. All right, now, how do I know that? Okay, well, I'm going to explain that in just a second. All right, look what it says. Um, let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and remember, uh, let's look, I'm, I'm reading it, sorry. Um, look at verse 1, okay, of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, all right, now Paul's writing to the Thessalonians. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Okay, now, there's a difference, all right? Don't get the day of Christ mixed up with the rapture of the church. Paul is referring to the day of Christ. Now notice what it says in verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. When you see that word falling away, there's a great apostasy. There are people in the world today that say, we're experiencing a great apostasy. No, we're not. What is an apostasy? All right, an apostasy is, is when you embrace Christianity and you, 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 you come close to getting saved, but then you reject it. You never did trust Christ as your Savior. You became an apostate. You, you embraced truth. You clung to it, but you never trusted Christ as your Savior, and then you rejected it. And the Bible says that a man like that, is his, the, it, it'd be better if he weren't even born. Uh, you, know, you don't want to be an apostate. Okay, An apostate embraces the truth and then lets go of it. Now, that, that doesn't mean he loses his salvation. What I'm saying is, is that he he teaches, he uh, you know he he believes it, but he never trusts Christ as a savior. But then he forsakes it. All right, let's go. Over. That's what it's saying right here. All right, we have a great apostasy. There's a, a falling away first. Now, what in the world does that mean? Well, let's keep going. All right, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who's that? That's the Antichrist. That's a man by the known as Antichrist, all right? I believe that the devil has one reserved for every century, for every generation at least. Um, Harrison's convinced that Napoleon Bonaparte might have been the Antichrist. I think it's possible too. I mean, that guy was something. Uh, he was the emperor of Europe, the revived Roman Empire. Uh, I, I believe that there's a man reserved in every era. I think it's very possible that uh, you know, there's, there's just, there's all, all different men that, that could have easily been pointed out as the Antichrist. But look what it says in verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. You know what it is. That's what he's saying. What is it? It's you. You're the reason why he's being withheld. Really? Well, look what it says in verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. 
Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Huh? <laughs> Pastor, you got me lost now. It's okay, all right? That word let is an archaic word that actually means hinder. All right? Now, what is that? What, what am I trying to get at here? All right, whenever, whenever, in the, in the, if you spoke in Elizabethan language, you would say, um, you would say, if he said, let that child, let that child, I don't know, let that child from taking the, the candy, you know, prevent him, all right? So whenever you see the word let in the, in the, in the King James Bible, it means prevent. So now that changes things a little bit. So look what it says again. We're going to change that word let to prevent. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now prevents will continue to prevent until he be taken out of the way. Now, who is he? And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Oh, wow. Okay, now, who is he? Anybody know? Anybody tell me? Who's he? Who's the one doing the letting? Who's the one that, that's preventing the Antichrist? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Now, who does the Holy Spirit reside in? Christians. That's right. And so because he resides in you, because clearly we can't stand against the devil, can we? Oh, but there's... Look, look, look. Hold your place here and go to... Go to, um, I'm sorry, go to 1 John, all right? Hold your place, all right? Hold your place. 1 John chapter 4, and look at verse 4. I love this, all right? Ye, all right, are you there? <laughs> Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because, what? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Okay, so the one who's preventing the devil is the Holy Spirit, he's God. And imagine, God dwells in you. Did you know that the Bible says that we're one spirit with Almighty God? Well, it makes sense because the Bible says in verse three of this very same book or epistle, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, daughters of God. Wow, that's really something. Now, what does that mean? All right, what does that mean for this timeline here? Okay. When he says, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now look back at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, okay? He's talking about the rapture of the church. The one who is preventing the devil. So I show you a mystery. We shall not all die. That's what it means when it says we shall not all sleep. So Mr. Mala, it's very possible that the Lord could come back and you wouldn't have to worry about that lung transplant. Wouldn't that be nice? He could come back right now and take us up to be with him. Now where does it say that in the Bible? Okay. Oh, well, it's in the same passage here. Okay, um, let, me, let me just, uh, just put down some, some words here so I can find it. <laughs> First Thessalonians chapter 4, okay? So he's talking to the same group of people. What's going on in Thessalonica? There's a lot of persecution. There's a lot of people who have been killed for their faith. They're very discouraged. They're very scared. They don't know what's going to happen next. And Peter is saying, or Paul is saying, don't lose faith. Jesus is coming back. Keep on being faithful. So he's trying to encourage the Thessalonians. He didn't know. He didn't know when he was coming back. He didn't come back, but I'm sure that he strengthened their faith by telling them this, okay? But he strengthens mine for sure. Um, now notice. 
Verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep or which are dead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with mom, <laughs> with Miss Helen, with people that you love, people that you long to see, caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. <laughs> It'll be over. And verse 18 says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. He's saying, don't lose hope. Get excited. Jesus is going to call us home. Now, what's weird about that is that the angel told the apostles, he said, that in like fashion, as you saw Jesus ascend from the Mount of Olives, you're going to see him come back to the Mount of Olives. As a matter of fact, he's going to come back so hard that the Mount of Olives is going to split in half. But now, wait a minute. Is that here? Okay, no, it's not. Notice, it says that we will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, right? And that's where the judgment seat begins, and here is the marriage supper of the Lamb. So while we're having a feast for seven years, the earth is falling apart. <laughs> that's going to be something, isn't it? And uh, I love what Dean Miller said. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Miller was at the men's uh, prayer advance. He said that the Lord Jesus is going to finish his dinner at the end of that seven-year period. He's going to wipe his mouth and he's going to go, let's ride. <laughs> I love that. He said, we're going to get on our horses and we're going to come back to earth with him. And that's when he comes back to earth as king. He's going to come back, and it says that out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And we're going to be there with him. I believe that. The Word of God says that. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you some of the verses where it says that in the future. But that is what happens. Now, I want you to notice this, okay? There's a little gap right here, all right? There's nowhere in the Bible that says that there is a gap. But the fact of the matter is, is there has to be a little gap before the seven-year tribulation takes place. Okay, now I'm going to tell you why. Because whoever the Antichrist is, is going to be able to sign a peace treaty. And do you know what's going to happen when he signs the peace treaty? He's going to build the Jews a temple, almost like Herod's, on the Temple Mount. Do you know how much of a problem that's going to be for him right now? You know why? Does anybody know why? The Dome of the Rock is there. Muslims everywhere come to Mecca. And they circle around. I mean, they squeeze tight together just so they can kiss that rock. That rock inside of that dome is very important to the Muslims. And so if the Antichrist, according to Scripture, is going to build a temple, do you know what that means? It means he's going to have to have a little bit of clout, don't you think? Do you know of anybody right now that has enough clout to do something like that? I don't. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you this. As soon as the Holy Spirit is gone, powers of darkness are going to flood this earth and they're going to raise up Antichrist in such a way that you will have never seen such a leader as him. And he will rise and he will intimidate and he will frighten people into submission. People will love him, but anyone who gets in his way had better not. <laughs> All right. Uh, he is going to be completely demon-possessed. And he's going to take rule, and he's going to have such power that he's going to become the ruler of the entire world. And the world is preparing for it. The world uh, is, is shrinking as we speak. 
the information age is just, it's, it's amazing. At the very end of Daniel, and I'm going to stop it. I'm going to stop right now, okay? But at the very end of Daniel, he says that in the latter days, he says, I want you to take this book, I want you to seal it up until the end. At the end, it says that man will go to and fro in the earth and knowledge shall be increased. If you get up in the morning, get up about 6.30 in the morning, 7, and look up at the sky, and you will see something called air traffic. And you'll probably be able to count about 7, 8, 9, 10 airplanes going through the sky. You know why? Because man is going to and fro in the earth, and knowledge is increasing. I'll tell you what, you know who my best friend is right now? Chat GPT. <laughs> Knowledge is increasing. No, I'm just kidding. He's not my friend. All right. I don't like you. <laughs> you know, you can actually say I don't like you. It'd be interesting to see what he said. But anyway. Watch. I'm going to just, I'll give you an example. Okay. Watch this. Tell me about the verse in Daniel where people shall go to and fro in the earth and knowledge shall be increased. The verse you're referring to is Daniel 12, verse 4 in the King James Version, which states, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? Now, you, I can basically let that thing stay on, and while I'm studying, I can ask it questions. I can say, hey, tell me where this verse is. Tell me where that verse is. And he tells me, knowledge is increasing rapidly, and it's all for the sake of the Antichrist coming into the picture and taking over. He's got the number 666. People get that number wrong so much. It's so... It's so it's, they, they're so scared of it. It's ridiculous. 666 means that the Antichrist is almost God, but not quite. <laughs> All right? That's really what it means. It means he's fallen short of being God, number seven. That's all it means. He's the number of man, perverted man. But he's going to be close to being omniscient. He's going to know everything as far as information. He's going to know where you are. He's going to know if you're if you're uh, if you're subject to him or not, and if you're not, you won't be able to buy anything. <laughs> Did you know that you can walk into stores now and take stuff and walk out without paying for it? How? Uh, what do you mean? Well, actually, if you walk into some of these shops called the Amazon store, you can buy stuff and it'll pick up your information on Amazon and it'll charge you. You don't even have to. You don't even have to pay. You just put the stuff that you want in your pocket and walk out, and it charges you automatically. That's what's going to happen when people refuse to get the mark. They're gonna, you're going to walk in and try to get food, and it's going to go, ah, 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 because it doesn't register that you have the ability to do that. All right, I'm going to stop. Lord, we pray that you just help us as we consider these things. And Lord, I ask that you would give us the... Uh, the, the knowledge and the understanding to be able to discern what all this is about. And Lord, I pray that you would help us not to just look up and wait for you, but to be about our Father's business. Lord, help us to know that because the time is short, that there are many who may not believe if we don't tell them. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be more in earnest about our soul winning, to tell people about him, to find new ways. And Lord, I do thank you that you are coming back. And I pray that you would help us, Lord, to prepare for that coming. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. If you have questions about what I, anything I just shared with you, I'll be happy to share them with you. Um, I will send you uh, uh, the diagrams, all right, uh, so you can study them. I can either print it for you or I can text it to you. Either way, I can get those things to you, okay? But, um,
but those are all those are all great diagrams to look at. Okay. It's exciting, isn't it? <laughs>